Hello guys, and welcome back to the HJW Gaming channel, and something slightly different from my usual content. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a recent war that we had with two other factions in our server, and just try and talk through some of the battle strategies and some of the things that we used to try and get an advantage in this war. I really hope you enjoy. There will be moments where the quality of the video dips as well as the resolution. This is due to some of it being recording on, recorded on an iPad and some recorded on a mobile. Apologies for any inconvenience. So as you can see from this introductory clip right at the beginning of our war, you can see that both our faction, Lothlorien, and the opposing faction, Variags here, are both extremely pressed together, right on the border of Southern Anduin Vale and the Undeeps. Us, as Lothlorien, currently control the Southern Anduin Vale, and the Variags currently control the Undeeps. Soon on, Erebor will also be adjoining and coming through Amon Lank to also join on the Variag side of the war. As you can see, both of us have a lot of forts and a lot of armies stacked up waiting to push, and both pushed at exactly the same time, as we knew which time each team was going to go for their push. Of course, this won't always be the case in your wars, but as we're on pretty good terms with this Variag faction, we decided to make things a little bit fun and hit exactly the same time. Now you can see there, strategy-wise, you can see they've got a couple of different stacks uh, spread up and down this uh, fort wall line. The biggest of which is right directly opposite our stack, so we stacked on one of our frontline bases of Lord Rain, with the intention of pushing through and trying to get some of their forts uh, taken down. One thing to note here is we actually don't have war buff here, as we required to use the war buff uh, a couple of days earlier, so we had to go through this war in the first 24 hours without any war buff whereas the Variags definitely do have their war buff, so they have that advantage as far as pushing into our front lines goes. So as good side, we're of course going to struggle to push all the way through their forts. So what our plan was, was to drive at the 200 tiles right in front of Lord Rain's base to try and get control of those, try and clear the tiles directly surrounding them, and then essentially play defence and stack up on those tiles and guard and try and soak up as many hits as possible so that we use up the enemy armies and also cause some of them to be uh, put on the 10 minute cooldown if they're defeated. Once the number of armies coming at us from Variags depletes, we can then send out our siege armies to then start clearing some of their forts where they'll hopefully only have half filled armies. Now there are a few upsides and downsides to this decision. The, work, the first of which is that the Variags had an extremely large stack on the second 200 tile that you can see we're attacking now. To begin with, there was almost 100 armies on that, so we have to make sure that we're fully focused and we're, we're going to lose a lot of troops here, clearing those armies off. Additionally, there is also an enemy base directly touching that tile, so we're aware that we're going to have to use, despite not having war, we're going to have to use an incredible amount of stamina and siege to try and uproot that base, to get it out of the way before that 200 tile can be made safe. I'll do a video on guard cycling uh, on a large tile in the future. The second disadvantage of course is that any flanks around us are a lot more difficult to mop up because we have our primary force all focused on exactly the same point and exactly the same objective. This means that if they flank around, say to try and hit some of our other forts or also some of our keeps that are on the front line, there's not a lot we can do about this, as if we pull too many people away, we'll of course lose focus and the Variags can regain their territory. Now as you see here in this clip, we've gained the first 200 and you can just see how many arrows we have pointing towards this tile. Everyone is just trying to pile on and stack as quickly as possible in order to hold this tile. Now the problem with this is that the Variags can also directly attack this tile currently. So what we need to try and do is we need to try and clear the forts immediately surrounding this tile. The reason for that is once the tiles are immediately surrounding that 200 are cleared, we can then all stack on the 200 and use the guard function to protect the tile and the surrounding tiles. If you then take a hit and your army gets taken down to half, you know, half troops, you can remove your guard and reinforce. This stops you from losing that second half of troops if you're hit by another full army. So this is a great way to deplete the enemy troops whilst also conserving as many of yours as possible. So that's what we're looking to try and do, is to try and protect those two 200 tiles so that we can then use our advantage 
And hopefully, by having so many armies on those two large tiles, it'll force the enemy to have to focus on our armies there, rather than going for the flank routes. So as you can see currently, the fact that we don't have that 200 tile protected with a guard cycle does mean that we are absolutely bleeding troops until we can get that done. Lots of commanders are being sent home, fully zeroed, using up an enormous, enormous number of troops. So we need to make sure that's cleared as soon as possible. Now if we forward forward a little bit, you'll see just here, this is approximately an hour after the last clip. You can see that the 200 tile directly in front of Lord Rain's base, we've now secured that and all the, bit, all the keeps around it have also been destroyed, which allowed us to stack up and just reinforce and guard and just take advantage of that position until we had enough armies there to then drive onto this second 200, which we're doing currently. The plan is exactly the same, get the 200, clear the forts around the outside, but in this case we're also going to have to uproot the keep directly bordering it. Once that's done we can take the tiles surrounding and then we just hold for as long as possible and try and keep an eye on what's going on around us. Such as, for example, as you saw there, Erebor is now trying to join the fray and there's a fortress going up for them to come and support the Variag forces. Now of course Variags have seen us in action previously, so they know exactly what we're trying to do here. They've seen this happen a few times before. So you can see as we're sat, guarded, or on this tile, they are also trying to pile all their armies to try and get us off this tile, because they know exactly what we're trying to do, and they don't want to allow us to have that ground in the centre of all their forts, you know, directly touching one of their players' bases, so they're trying to get us off there. Simultaneously, they know whilst we're occupied with that tile, and with that objective, they have an opportunity also to hit a flank route. So as you saw there, they've started flanking to the south of us uh, and have captured a similar kind of defensive structure with a large tile and a guard around the outside. To the north of here, you can't see it, they've also managed to get direct access to a couple of uh, other players' bases. I believe at this point they've uprooted one of our players called the Cap and they've also started hitting another player called Lightbringer's base who's quite a strong player and he's pretty good at, uh, I believe he bounces quite a lot of armies off of his base, because of course you can take advantage of um, not having to use stamina and not having to worry about cooldown timers for your armies when they're in your keep and the opponent's attacking. So he can just repeatedly use his strongest armies over and over again and waste as many opposing troops as possible. So meanwhile, while that's going on, we are purely focused here, as you can see, on this 200 tile, up to 17 armies now, and we've started getting some of the southern, uh, or the, the forts cleared just to the south of it, and others are also clearing the other forts. Meanwhile, the Varag's also aware, as you can see, that this base here is going to be their, their primary access point, so we know we have to try and clear this base. So they're starting to stack up on the base to try and make sure they have an access point to our, to our 200 tile. So our primary focus here is going to be to try and drive our way into this base, as I said, and just get it cleared. It's worth saying that this is no easy feat. This Varag's faction is one of the strongest factions I think that we've faced, at least as a fellowship. Uh, they have a lot of very, very strong commanders, many which have you know full gold gear, uh, and they're also very experienced in battle tactics, so they do know what they're doing. So forward on, you can see how many armies they have stationed around us here. Thankfully, I think a lot of these where they have, you know, two, three, four sat around keeps, they're quite likely armies that have been cleared previously. So now they're just sat there waiting for reinforce or sat there low on troops, or potentially the players were unavailable at the time of this battle. Moving forward slightly, you can see we've got up to uh, about 15 armies. We're still being removed. You can just see the number of arrows is enormous. How many players... Uh, are fighting around in this area. Of course, we're still trying to hold the other tiles. We don't want to lose uh, ground behind us whilst we push forwards. So we're just purely focused on trying to uproot that, uh, uproot that base, and then also guard against opposing armies trying to hit us from behind, as there are many of them. And it's so hard to see exactly what's going on, as the number of arrows is extortionate. Now, just to check elsewhere, whilst we're also trying to clear and hold those 200s, you can see down here, just to our southern route, their flank has made great progress up towards the baseline of our fort line in southern Anduin Vale. 
And that has unfortunately resulted in this Varag's faction taking a lot of tiles, getting access to some of our forts and clearing them, but most worryingly they've also taken a Bjorning camp. The problem with the Bjorning camp is that as it's a neutral unit uh, camp, if you capture it you do get a longer period of protection than you would capturing a normal tile. I believe it's an hour. So they have an hour's protection on this tile where they can stack up and prepare to ready to push onto our forts and keeps. You can see we're trying to uh, minimize this risk as much as possible. So we've come down to the southern area with some of our troops. We've had uh, two or three players whose bases are nearby. Just clear up the tiles around it, ready to push as soon as that protection comes down. We want to have minimum exposure, but we also don't want to divert too many players away from our main central stacks and lose the progress that we've made so far. Speaking of the stacks, as the Variags were struggling to uproot us from the stacks, what they've started doing here is you can see they've started going around the stack. So whilst we were hoping to divert and focus all of their armies in one location, they've started going around to try and target our forts to get some of our armies recalled back to base so that they can start taking out those tiles, which is a clever strategy. Especially as it makes good use of their primary advantage on us, which is that the fact that they have war buff. Now if I show you here, this is kind of a time lapse of a good few minutes of this war. You can see that the number of armies marching has depleted massively from the beginning, where there are arrows streaking here, there and everywhere, and hundreds of armies stacked up on tiles. That's because on both sides, obviously we've sustained heavy losses, so there is a limited number of troops and barracks going on on both sides. You can see here on our 200s, as we focus the second 200, they've actually gained access to our first one and got us down to only five armies. So we need to make sure we reconsolidate our position and get those tiles back simultaneously whilst also holding our advanced position. We do now have that second 200 and we've also uprooted the base nearby so we're just making solid on there and starting to cut our way as you can see on the right hand side through their, their keeps and getting their forts out the way. This of course is a difficult journey as without war buff with good side siege we're having to just hit tiles an enormous number of times to be able to get through. Now again we've skipped forward just a, an hour or two here and you can see the progress that we've made here. So this is, we've cut through a lot of their forts and we've started to uproot some of their players. Additionally, Erebor's fortress has also completed, allowing a lot of them to send armies down to supplement the Variag's barracks, which were running pretty low. Uh, I'd say we probably came out, because of our defensive tactics, slightly better off uh, in this war. However, Erebor now are supplementing those barracks with additional, uh, uh, with additional warriors which isn't ideal, you can see they've stacked up here next to this keep and it's just a bit of a pain as we now have to use pretty drained barracks to try and wipe them off and get them out of the way. Now this is where things start to slightly swing away from us. We might have uprooted a lot of players and taken a lot of keeps, however to do so we've of course used an enormous amount of stamina without war buff and also an enormous number of troops. So er Erebor coming in with, uh, with full barracks can therefore take advantage and start hitting our commanders which are maybe running um, suboptimal troop compositions or potentially we might even just have a dearth of commanders. As you saw in the last time lapse there's a, a massively reduced number of armies there. So they're basically going to just really help with a late push to help get us back out and push us back into the southern Anduin Vale and out of Undeeps. Meanwhile, what we're trying to do with any commanders we do have and any stamina we do have is just clear this Erebor stack because we want to get to this keep uh, of the Varags just below as this is another strong player who does cause us a lot of trouble. So we're specifically trying to target the keeps that we find most troublesome. So we want to try and get him out and get him relocated to the other side of the map at which point it might, they might struggle to relocate back and it at least delay them in the long term and give us a foothold uh, in, in the war basically. So you can see we've pretty much cleared this stack at this point, or oh, it's just there, we have now cleared it. So the way to do that is just to make sure that you wash as many armies as possible all time together at the same tile. Because if you don't do so, as I said, the opponent can just guard cycle, and you know, dropping guard when they've been hit once, allowing them to reinforce. The problem for Erebor here that kind of blunted their ability to do that was their reinforcement time. Uh, as their keeps are mainly located on the opposite side of Amon Lank, 
they basically have quite long reinforcement times. So they, with 15 to 20 armies taking 15 to 20 hits, they couldn't reinforce quickly enough to get guard back up, which meant that we then, once we broke the guard, were able to hit all the half full armies sat on the tile. So now we've got access to this keep, you can see here where we've just sent, you can see how many arrows are back active again here. We are just trying best we can to get him cleared and uprooted. Of course the player himself is defending, uh, trying to snipe siege. So we have to make sure we're using strong armies, which again, just wastes up more and more stamina on our strong armies, which is a good play from their player. You've seen a couple of excerpts of battle reports here. You can see the strength of some commanders. Uh, some Erebor, some Variags, and it's yeah, it, you know they're not they're not whitewashed trades or anything like that. They're still you know strong armies, which are causing us a degree of trouble basically. Now, as you can see here from uh, from my boy Chiz, who's you know one of our one of our officers and kindly helped me with recording this footage on his mobile. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that our communications are as clear as possible. We're stating for the, you know, those in the north, we're connecting these here, make sure we all send together. And then you also saw a message from myself calling out which up route is next to go based on proximity and also based on the strength of the players. So we make sure to call out so we have our entire faction focused and driven on exactly the same objective. The one thing you don't want in war and one of the things that can really kill a lot of teams is that they just declare war and then their players just attack and swarm and all go as individuals. You never want to do that as the opponent can then pick you off one by one by one. Instead, you want to make sure that you're all driven towards many smaller objectives. That way, the pure focus on that can make sure you help each other, you, you know, make sure you get the opponents out the battle as quickly as possible. Uh, so being focused and organised makes a huge difference when fighting wars like this. Now you can see here, we're starting to get more and more reports here uh, of, get, of Erebor players as more and more Erebor players have made their way down for the battle. As that builds up, it does start to swing the tide somewhat, uh, as of course fighting as two factions is always a difficult ask, mainly just due to, not just due to player count, due to just barracks amount, as only you can only have so much barracks unfortunately. But we're still doing what we can, we're trying to push towards uh, the next keep, get rid of the Variag's forts, and we're also trying to make sure that we hold off, or at least dedicate some players to the north, to hold off uh, the, the Erebor push coming from their fortress. Uh, I don't think I've shown it, but down south, I think we have now cleared out the initial Variag's flank, particularly around the Bjorning's camp. So that area is now cleared up, and we've, we're basically keep making sure to keep the enemies in front of us, so we can always see what's in front of us, and make sure that we're pushing forwards. Again, this is a huge, uh, a huge point in that not letting your opponents get behind you, as looking like you're always moving forward is huge for your team's morale. In that always moving forward makes your team feel like they're winning, which is a huge thing, and also makes sure that everyone is fully motivated and gives everything they can. Whereas you have a similar effect on the opponent, whereas they feel like they're losing every fight or getting pushed back, their morale can dip, and they might decide, ah, oh, you know what, my commanders are down. I might just drop out of the fight, which means you have less armies to attack. It's an unfortunate way the game works, but it can be a huge advantage for yourself if you can make it happen. Now you can see here that I called out in our faction chat uh, which uh, keep I wanted to be the next one to go. And you can see here we've now connected and you can see everyone all at once pretty much in sync here. Every army is maybe 15-20 seconds apart. We're all hitting simultaneously on exactly the same keep to make sure to get him out as soon as possible making sure we're killing off his armies uh, and just shows how everyone is so organized getting all into the exactly the same position and all focusing the same objective as i've said this is crucial if you want to win in war as you can see the number of red arrows now has significantly decreased even further we still have some blue arrows on the move but the number of red arrows has decreased massively I think this is likely due to dwindling troop numbers, uh, as they've taken a lot of hits here. We're getting quite a few victories, um, mainly due to our organisation more than anything. As, as I've said, this Varax faction is extremely strong and has a very good commander level, um, particularly gear-wise. So, you know, they're not going to just sit down and take it. 
So I think their troops are running low. Ours, of course, are similar. So we're just trying to be careful and make sure that we don't lose too much. You're seeing a few, uh, a few reports starting to swing their way, particularly due to potentially suboptimal uh, compositions or reduced troop numbers, meaning we can't send full armies. We're still calling out exactly which forts or fortresses need to go, and we're all focusing the best we can all on exactly the same area. So people are calling out uh, the, some of the forts here. So, for example, we're aiming at Magnus Kahuna's fort there, who's one of the Varags players who is particularly tough to defeat. Um, he's a very, very strong player, so we're trying to focus on his keep just to make sure that we get him out. I'd recommend doing this and getting out the, the players that you see most active and most troublesome. If you can get them off the battlefield, then that can really stunt your opponent's advantage. To the north, Erebor have really started to get a foothold and they're employing similar tactics here with the Guard Cycling 200 tile. You can see to the south, we have this pretty much now on lock, 50 armies all secure in one area. So we've kind of prevented the Variag's push. However, we've also burned a hell of a lot of our stamina, so those armies are kind of stuck in place here. When attacking from a stack like that, it's very useful to try and use uh, the return after battle function, as that can be uh, you know, very useful for making sure you always return to the tile you're trying to guard. So you can see down south we kind of have things on lock. We've got Varegs kind of on the back pedal a little bit. However, to the north we do have the problem of Erebor building up. And with now our stamina depleted, there's very little we can do to push back up to the north to try and get them cleared. So we just have to make sure we're on damage mitigation as much as possible. Anyway, that's pretty much a full summary of the first few hours of our war. I couldn't record the whole war, unfortunately, as of course it would require several days worth of recordings and nobody can stay awake that long. I hope, however, talking through some of our battle strategies and tactics that we employ could be useful towards you and helping your faction become more organised. Though I will put a slight spoiler out, in the end we do get overwhelmed in that 2v1 due to the lack of troops and stamina. Anyway, that's everything from me. Please hit the recommended video and also check out my channel where I do have more advanced war guides and I'll have more coming up in the future. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.